it's Matt. Let's talk about Azure Machine Learning and the results of an automated ML run showing classification models. So here I am in Azure ML Studio and I'm taking a look at the result of a automated ML run. So we can see this run has completed. It took about an hour. I actually had a guard to keep this run running for only an hour at maximum or if it hit a model with an area under the curve of 98% or higher. Now that metric didn't happen, but we hit the hour cutoff, and so it stopped spending my compute resources and just said, hey, here are the best models I have. So we can see down here in the lower right, we've got this summary of the best model. This is showing us that it's a voting ensemble, and we can click to get some details, view all the metrics associated with it, you know, things like that. So uh, this is often simpler for non-ensemble models, but ensemble models such as uh, the voting ensemble tend to be pretty detailed with all these different stacks. Um, but let's take a look at some of the some of the tabs here. So over here, we can see the experiment it was part of. We can see the compute resource that it, that it ran on, as well as the data set we ran on it. And this colon one here, that's version one of this data set. The actual data set name is Titanic from Kaggle 2. OK, so let's take a look at the model. And this is actually all of the different machine learning models it evaluated, and this is Actually, right now, chunked down to two pages. Uh, I'm just going to show 100 up to 100 on uh, one page. There's only 43 models here, so this is all of them. And we can see the models at the top have a higher area under the curve than the models at the bottom. This is my primary metric for this run. So the worst model here had an area under the curve of 66%, and the best one had a area under the curve of 81.4%. So I can click in and see this, this model and get more details about it, but it evaluated these 43 different machine learning models to see which ones would be most effective. Um, so I, as a beginner data scientist, didn't need to know the difference between all these different combinations or what hyperparameters to try for each one of them. Uh, I just gave it an hour and said, hey, go ahead and try this out, see what works, see what doesn't. And I said, hey, this voting ensemble is the best one I found. And so I can click into it and I can get more details about it. So here I have that model summary again. And if I want to, I can click download to download the pickle file that has the model, uh, the train model in here, as well as some Python scripts to run it. And then I can delete this thing from Azure and run it directly from Python if I wanted to. I can click deploy to deploy it as a real-time endpoint or web service. I can click explain, which is going to generate my metrics and explanations and stuff like that. Uh, actually, just the explanations. The metrics are automatically generated. I can click view generated code to generate some Python code to run an automated ML run in the future. I can click test model to upload a data set full of predictions or full of things I want it to predict. And I can click register to kind of bookmark this in my models tab so I have it for later, later use. Uh, the metrics tab gives me a lot of uh, distinct metrics for the type of task I was trying to do. So here we see a lot of charts and a lot of helpful metrics. These can be pretty intimidating. These really deserve their own videos. Uh, I already have a metric, a, a video out there on confusion matrix. I'd recommend you check out these numbers in general. Higher is better. Aside from log loss, wherever that is, ah, where you want that to be as low as possible. Okay. So expect some future content on some of these other curves. I already have a video out there for confusion matrix, but it really would be what I would recommend for understanding if this model is good or bad or what it's, what it's good at or bad at. Uh, you can click on data transformation, which is currently in preview. And it gives us an image here of how it manipulated all the different you know, columns associated with this data set. Now, I can't get any tool tips on this. I really wish I could. So it would help me understand what columns are involved in this. But this helps me understand a little bit more about how it is, uh, how it's transforming things. I can click on explanations and get some details about you know, what the model thinks is important. This is a model trying to predict if someone would have lived or died based on the Titanic. And it, uh, this particular model, uh, I'm looking at the top four features. Uh, the sex or gender of the, of the passenger was the most important factor, followed by the class, first class, second class, third class, the fare they paid, and the age of the passenger. Um, I can expand this out to get you know even more features if I care about, and we see uh, as we keep going, um, we have you know less and less impact. Uh, so that's the aggregate feature importance uh, goes down as we go over. We can also get this in full screen or print it out if we want to. Uh, so there are some cool things over here. 
with uh, we can change this to be in box plot mode. So we now have much more of a of a positive negative kind of impact here, um, or we can keep it back back to its bar plot uh, there. We can also click on individual feature importance, and this helps us explore individual occurrences of things. Uh, so now I can go in here and I can say, hey, what's the probability of not surviving? Well, the age is a factor, so my age, as my age goes up, my probability of not surviving goes up a little bit. We can see there's this, this kind of weak linear relationship here with our data. But if I click over here and I change this from age to, let's say, uh, gender, so we're sex, um, we could see here that if sex is one, the probability of zero, probability of not surviving, um, tends to be maybe lower, looking at my x-axis here, than the probability of uh, zero. So I can see here that one is probably female and zero is probably male. Um, I can also change this from sex to uh, passenger class, which I think was P class here. Where is P class? There it is. But I can see that first class passengers had a higher chance of surviving. So over here on the left would be probability of, of, of surviving. And over here on the right is probability of dying. So first class, second class, third class, it really did make a difference as far as survival goes. But we had plenty of passengers from third class who survived and some passengers from first class who you know, did not. Uh, so this helps us understand a little bit more about our model and how it performs. Um, and you can kind of use this to get a sense of how did this model perform and do I really want to deploy it and you can download it, play with it, deploy it, whatever you want to do with it. But Azure Automated ML really helps you understand the models that it produces and it also generates some pretty decent models as well.